what is the current um, scientific take then on, on people involved in anti-gravity work? What's the current attitude? Um, it's, well, that's, it's tough to say. I can't speak for all scientists, but certainly, uh, to a certain extent, this activity has had a history of being marginalized. Uh, and I think that's slowly changing. Um, there was a group uh, a few years ago, the Breakthrough Physics Propulsion Community that NASA had organized, and that was receiving a small amount of funding to, to look at some of these ideas. That, uh, that, unfortunately, the funding was lost on uh, a couple of years ago. And so it's been picked up by uh, the Space Technology Applications International Forum, uh, and they've made a small space for this kind of alternate propulsion, or we could call it field propulsion, type of work. Uh, and it's uh, gaining credibility in the sense that uh, people with these ideas are now publishing and sharing ideas. And when you publish in scientific journals, that sets a new standard for the level of work. And so I think it's slowly gaining credibility, but, it, but it's a long struggle because it, the area has been marginalized for so long that it's going to take many, many years of credible research before I think it'll be widely accepted by the scientific community. What t what's your take on that? Well, the thing that surprised me, you know, I started American Anti-Gravity in 2002, and I've been working in this area uh, since 1992. And the thing that I've seen over the last few years has been a massive convergence. Um, it's almost as if everyone is coming up on the same goal and the same core kernel of ideas from different directions. And that was actually how I ended up working with the stage group. A lot of the ideas that I was looking at, a lot of the papers that I was posting online, we're looking more and more like the ideas coming out of state on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're seeing different directions and different paths from engineering, particle physics, and just plain inventors working in the garage coming together and it's converging. And that really led American Anti-Gravity to becoming a nonprofit. Our goal was to become the infrastructure to support this research and in turn to support everyone out there who is doing this work to be able to publish, interact with each other, and just make things converge even more until that final, ultimate solution to gravity is found. To, to gather that information all in one place. The internet really has been a key enabler for getting these people together, and uh, Tim's website and his role has just been pivotal in that, so it's really helped a lot in terms of organizing this area. The, the big limitation, though, has been and remains funding. Um, last year we started seeing a number of people from the government coming forward. You know, and typically, I, I guess the, the UFO community would say that they were Big Brother, right? The men in black, the bad guys. And we started seeing engineers and scientists and some very high-ranking officers from a number of branches coming forward and saying, look, we are interested in this stuff. We want to use this technology to help America. But we can't fund it. We can't get that funding approved. And so they, despite their rank and prestige and scientific credentials, are in the same boat that everyone else is in. So one of the big drives has been, let's put together a core set of ideas. Let's find funding to drive those forward. And let's do it in a way that's not quite as mission critical as NASA would have to. You know, one of the challenges that NASA has is that their projects almost always have to work. You know, failure is not an option. But in breakthrough science, failure occurs on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. It's more common than not. Yeah. Yeah. Another example would be uh, Dr. Bob Baker, who had a chair at UCLA in applied physics for many years. He's retired now, but he still works in high-frequency gravity waves, and he's had a very difficult time getting his ideas accepted, uh, even though he's published numerous papers in respected journals. Uh, and so he has uh, submitted the ideas to NASA, the National Institute for Advanced Concepts, and, in the past, I, I guess he's going to submit them again, but in the past they've been rejected. Uh, he submitted them to DARPA, and, uh, which is the Defense Advanced Projects Research um, Activity, and he's had, has had them rejected there as well. And so, really, he's, he's had to go to the Chinese for an audience, and they've been very receptive and have agreed to fund a number of his um, experimental research activities in, in high-frequency gravity waves. But it's very tough in this country with the conservative, really relatively conservative establishment that we have uh, to get this kind of work funded. Well, one of the papers that you did that I thought was amazing, and I think it's having amazing repercussions, was the Gerdstein effect. You did a, a, a large write-up on that. I, I, was, I was actually really excited to publish that in American Anti-Gravity, but 
it seems like it's almost creating a ripple of waves. As I recall, it, it's a, literally an interaction uh, within conventional physics between electromagnetism and, and gravity. Right. What, what makes it interesting, and it's, I'll try to put it in layman's terms, is that the Gerstenstein effect is one of the few effects that uh, connects standard electromagnetism to gravity. And the effect essentially was uh, discovered by an astrophysicist, uh, Gerstenstein, in the 1960s. It was a solution to Einstein's general relativity equations. These are just the standard accepted general relativity equations that Einstein wrote down in the 30s. And what it says is that if you shine uh, an electromagnetic wave, such as a microwave or a ray of light, through a strong magnetic field, that what will come out the other end is not just that, that light wave, but also a gravity wave. Uh, and it's because of the coupling of the magnetism, that magnetic field coupling to the electromagnetism, that what you see coming out, one of the things that comes out is a gravity wave. So this is one way to create a gravity wave, just using electromagnetism. Now we have an incredible array of technology out there uh, that can manipulate microwaves down to the phase angle, very, very well-defined waves. And so if we can take that technology that already exists and, and create gravity waves with it, that's now an extremely powerful tool for helping to manipulate gravity.